Yeah, I cried through the whole thing. What about it? guys. Uh, it's another one, another in the room review, I guess we're gonna say. Uh, which, this backdrop drop actually does work well for, like, film shoots, and I really should use it more often, but I digress. Uh, so, yeah, this is the other movie I saw a couple weeks ago that I have to catch up on, uh, because I do want to talk about it, because it does involve my personal heroes. Uh, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, which is the Mr. Rogers kind of, sort of, biopic uh, that came out uh, a couple weeks ago, um, which I know is kind of on this way out of theaters, but I didn't want to make a point to talk about it, um, just so I can maybe bring it up again during the best of years, uh, best of list. Don't know if I'm going to get on there, but it might. Um, so that, therefore, but it's, it's stuck with me surprisingly well. Like, I do remember quite a bit about it, which is surprising considering how much movie as I see. Um, so a beautiful day in the neighborhood, well, I, I remember most of it except the character's names. Uh, because that happens every fucking time. Well, except Mr. Rogers, I remember that one. Um, yeah, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is obviously... Um, now, if you're long-time fans of this channel and this show knows that uh, Mr. Rogers has, holds a very special place in my heart. Uh, the review, I, if you go back and watch the review for uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, uh, I had a full-on, like, existential crisis in the car, and I saw it by myself, and I sobbed in the theater, and it was really uncomfortable, and I was really glad I saw it by myself. <laughs> um, I have since watched that documentary, like, 20 times, I've cried every single time I've watched it, always the same goddamn part, um, and it's become my favorite movies of all time. And I think the point I, the point I made, uh, during that time, during that review, was it's, it really, it, it's so strange and it's so surreal um, to just watch a person who was just that good and that honest and that wholehearted um, to see that a person existed like that without any caveats any catches any skeletons in their closet which is something that would is seems like it's so rare and it's so and it just you feel warm and understood when you listen to them, the way they use language, the way they talk, the way they look. Um, there's such an understanding there. There's such a, there's so much that just so ahead of his time, he was so ahead of his time with how he talked to people, with how he talked to children, and how he made people feel understood. Um, so this movie's not as good as a documentary. <laughs> Um, but it is very good, um, mostly because of Tom Hanks. I mean, it does make sense that if you're gonna play the, like, cast somebody to play the nicest person in the, like, that ever, like, existed in our lifetimes, it'd be Tom Hanks, the other nicest person who has currently exists in our lifetime. Um, and while there is the obvious, like, getting used to in that Tom Hanks looks and sounds nothing like Mr. Rogers, um... What, what Tom Hanks does well is he gets his spirit right, which I you could argue is more important. Um, his mannerisms, his speech patterns, his looks, the way he moves, um, the deliberate pace in which he talked to people, and the deliberate way he approached everything, is done damn near perfectly. And that's the part, I guess, that really, really matters. I'm not going to say it's perfect. There are some points that definitely feel a little... Um, I don't want to say distracting, but it, it does take you out for a brief period of time, particularly when he's doing the puppet voices. Uh, like, Kane Friday, he does very well, but whenever he has to do, um... Oh, God, what was the name of the cat? The cat puppet. Oh, I feel so bad for forgetting the name. Um, uh, Stripes the Tiger? No. Fuck! Okay, it's gonna bother me. I know, I know, I know. I'll, I'll, I'll get to this in just a second. Um, the cat puppet, Mr. Rogers, Daniel Stripes, Daniel Stripe the Tiger, Daniel Stripe Tiger, that's what it was, okay, that was gonna drive me crazy. Um, now what's kind of interesting about this movie is this movie isn't told through the perspective of, uh, Tom Hanks, Mr. Rogers, it's, it's told through the perspective of... A magazine writer um, who did exist, who does exist in real life, named Lloyd Vogel. Uh, Lloyd Vogel. Um, now, what's kind of interesting about this is Lloyd Vogel was a real man. He did exist. He did write an article about Mr. Rogers. That was turned as a huge profile piece about him. 
Um, but everything else about this guy in this movie is pretty much made up bullshit. Uh, <laughs> and like, and he, he's straight, like, he's still, he's still alive. Like, he, they asked him, like, is any of this true? He's like, no, none of this is true. Um, well, none of what happened in his life is true. Like, I think the only part that was true is that he did have a bunny named Rat, like, he did have a pet rabbit, he just, like, not pet rabbit, like, a stuffed rabbit, he just called Rabbit. Um, that does come into play into this movie. And one of the few, like, things I'll deem it for, which I'll get to. Um, and, uh, but the, everything that Mr. Roger does in this movie, um, did actually happen. Uh, it didn't happen with Lloyd, but it still happened in his lifetime. So really, uh, this movie, you kind of get what this movie is, like, almost a best of real, of, like, the best real-life events that either Mr. Rogers said or things that happened around him or things he did, um, through the lens of Lloyd Vogel, who is kind of just our vessel to explore Mr. Rogers' world and his influence and how he affected people, children and adults alike. Um, so, like, the part in the trailer, like, when, uh, Mr. Rogers is on the subway and all the people in the bus and, and the train cart he's in start seeing Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood theme song, and that actually did happen. Uh, like, most of the thing that happens when Mr. Rogers is on screen, uh, that you think wouldn't happen really did happen. Maybe not in that context, that's true in the movie, but it did happen in some context all the same. Um, so watching it from that edge perspective is really interesting. It, it is a very interesting fictional biopic. Um, but yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd Vogel in this movie is, is a kind of a broken man who admits he's kind of a broken man who has some serious daddy issues, um, uh, because his father, like, I think he, like I said, he abandoned him when he was younger and while it was, like, cause it was, uh, his, his mom was dying and his dad just couldn't handle it and he left and just think he's, the whole movie is basically about him repairing his relationship with his father. Um, while also doing a profile on Mr. Rogers. The more he talks to Mr. Rogers, um, the more he kind of learns how to deal with his life, the more he learns how to confront uh, his past, and the more he learns how to confront uh, his own emotions and express those emotions, and kind of lose the cynical, jaded edges that he currently has by being the most optimistic man that ever lived. Um, but what's really interesting about this movie, and again, outside of like the, the kind of the best of uh, moments that they show Mr. Rogers, is how they show Mr. Rogers as a person, as, or at least as a character. Because again, it's kind of hard to say how much uh, of like, because the movie doesn't really go much into his private life. In fact, a lot of the times they show how Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers kind of avoids discussing too much of his private life with Lloyd. Like he does admit some things, like he did have a strained relationship with his son. Um, for a long time, and uh, some other stuff about him, but he's, he brings very private ties. Like, he keeps kind of turning the conversation back on Lloyd. Like, he, he kind of sees that he's just this broken, sad man, and he wants to help him, wants to make help him feel better. And uh, Tom Hanks manages to capture just these lingering stares, like these deliberate pauses, this, to uh, like, Mr. Rogers' unique grasp on time and how to use it, and Tom Hanks nails it to a T, that every time he's on stage, I just kind of started tearing up because the way that Mr. Rogers did it, the way Tom Hanks does in this movie, just made you feel seen. It made you feel like he was staring right through you, and that's what kind of made his, like, the simplicity in which he approached things so powerful is because through the simplicity of language, the simplicity of body language, the simplicity of just making eye contact and expressing concern, you just felt seen and heard, and that is really powerful. And it's and it's underrated, and a lot of people don't understand how to do that. They don't understand how to be that. And to know how to express that is, it, it hits you, it hits you hard. and. They do a good job of expressing that the power of that simplicity throughout the film. Um, now, is the movie perfect? No. Uh, there, there had a few like a uh, few sequences that kind of bothered me. There's one sequence towards the end, uh, like okay, there's two major like scenes that kind of bother me in particular. Uh, the first is that Lo like Lloyd's wife uh, is very much no like just had a baby. They just they're new parents. And, 
Lloyd's wife knows that his, her, like Lloyd hates his father, and his father is trying to like basically kind of force his way back into his life, and Lloyd's having none of it. Like, I, I don't want you in my life. Uh, you had your chance, and you fucked up, and I don't want you here. Uh, leave me alone. Um, but the, fa the the dad just kind of keeps pushing for it. Like he like he camps outside his apartment building, kind of waiting for him to come down. Um, and then eventually one day when he comes home, he finds that the wife let his dad in with his uh, with his new wife, and for over for dinner and kind of surprises him with this. And Lloyd ne justifiably kind of freaks out, and it does it does not go well at all. And I felt like that we tried to frame him as the bad guy for that, but I, from, uh, from me, I'm like, in my perspective, because I have a complicated history with my family, I'm like, if you invited a family member that I've made very clear that I do not want in my life, and you just let him into our home without my, without consulting me, without asking me, just expecting me to be okay with this, you have every right to be fucking pissed at that. So I was a little annoyed that that was kind of portrayed like, oh, how dare you not be happy that I let your father in, a father that you actively despise without your permission. How dare I? you make me the bad guy for that? Uh, that kind of bothered me. Um, and then there's a, there's a dream sequence later on uh, where they kind of play into the Mr. Rogers neighborhood part of it where they make Lloyd uh, the rabbit with the they give these weird like funky bunny ears and they go dream sequence like for a while. Um, that I get where they were going with it, but it just kind of clashed because there's, there's no other scene like it in the movie, so it just kind of comes out of nowhere and feels kind of, makes it feel kind of disjointed, um, and then disappears. That's so, like that one just felt that scene felt a little forced to me compared to the rest of the movie, especially when the strongest parts of the movie are just when people are talking like people when they're saying, um, "This is how I feel," and "This is how I'm trying to cope with this," or like saying, or just people that just meant. I'm scared, or uh, Mr. Rogers explaining how uh, how ways you can deal with anger or frustration, and then realizing that's what he does when no one else is around. Um, when they have those character moments, and even when they have scenes like with the dad and Lloyd talking towards the end, they're really powerful scenes because these are really good actors, and the writing here is deliberately meant to convey the humanity that Mr. Rogers wanted to bring back into the world. Um, there's even one line I loved in this movie, um, when Lloyd is talking to Mr. Rogers' wife, while Mr. Rogers kind of mingling with a, a crowd of his fans, and uh, Lloyd just asks her, like, what's it like to be married to a real-life saint? And she just kind of says, I don't like, like, he would hate to be called that because that implies that no one else can do it. And I love that, and to me that so much encapsulates what Mr. Rogers wanted, like he just wanted to convey that goodness, and he wanted to, everyone to exemplify it, and everyone to practice it. Um, unfortunately, we don't live in a world where it's realistically, realistic to do that, at least not to the extent Mr. Rogers can. If everyone did, then of course things would be a lot better, but... It, it, I, I wish things could be as simple as Mr. Rogers made it sound, but he knew it was complicated. He wasn't naive to that fact, but he wanted to be the best example and show that people are people and that they people need to be understood, that people need to feel, or need to be allowed to feel what they feel. Um, they need to be allowed to express that and learn from that. And... Well, the documentary, in my opinion, does it better. This movie still very much conveys, it, but is a very important lesson um, for kids and adults. There's still a lot that adults can learn from Mr. Rogers about how to express yourself and how to embrace empathy. Um, maybe even towards people that don't necessarily deserve it. Um, that doesn't mean you need to apologize for, for bad people's behavior by a strict imagination. But you can understand why a bad person does a bad thing um, without apologizing and accepting it. But empathy allows you to understand it regardless. Um, that, this is where it gets kind of like complicated talks about emotions and stuff like that. I knew this was going to happen the minute I started talking about this movie. Um, yeah, I. but overall, as a movie, I think, it, I think it's really solid. It teaches the lessons that... Mr. Rogers conveyed, and uh, he is someone I still very much aspire to be, even though I I personally don't think I can. I have way too much anger. Um, maybe I need to bash more keys on the piano. Um, 
I'm still learning how to deal with the mad that I feel a lot of the time, and I still haven't always found a system that works, but I'm trying. And I, I guess maybe that's really what really boils down to uh, with this movie, too, is like, all we can do is try. And we might not always succeed, but we can try. And the trying makes it worth it to keep trying, to keep growing, and keep learning. And if that's all you can do, that if that's all you can do is try, then that's enough. I mean, that's a positive note to end on. So, I'm gonna stop there. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned later this week. We got a bunch of shit that just came out that I gotta go see, and I'm gonna try and make time for. We're gonna release our new editorial uh, probably within the next week, I imagine, before Christmas, uh, and I'm gonna release it. Uh, like free for you guys on um, YouTube instead of going through Patreon because Merry Christmas and and much like discussing Mr. Rogers or Mr. Rogers means for me um, it is extremely personal and it is a message that I feel very strongly about um, that in my opinion ends uh, what has been a really difficult 2019 on a positive note so please look out for that within the next week or so uh, meantime uh, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time take care